Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. This is Pastor Lee bringing greetings from the Refugee Center of Yahweh, located 28 a week, Grand Street in the city of North Virginia. We thank Yahweh today again for this another opportunity to come before you and to share the word today and to gather to worship. Yahweh in spirit and in truth, hallelujah. Another week Yahweh has brought us through. Without her, how am I day? We have so much to give and praise for. As we prepare today for our service, we want you to remember those on our prayer list today that Yahweh will strengthen them and rock them and give them that peace and comfort that only He can give. Oh, yeah. God is truly worthy of all praise and all honor. Today on our prayer list, beloved, we have Brother Larry Parker and Sister Doris Parker. Brother Leon Anthony Woodbury Sr. of Richmond, Virginia. Brother Dan Lola and Sister Roseanne of California. Sister Sharon Jackson of Chicago, Illinois. Sister Cecilia West of North Virginia. Sister Deborah and Brother George Butler and Brother George Butler Jr. Mother Florence Graham of Richmond, Virginia. David Joseph Otis Sr. of North Virginia. Sister Henrietta Benjamin. Sister Mary Frances Austin of North Carolina. Yes, yes. Sister Maggie and Brother Henry Hazel of Mississippi. Sister Jordan Van Slyman of New York. Sister Mary Jackson of New York. Sister Sharon Jackson of New York. Sister Diane Bowie and Brother Darrell Bowie of Brother John Jones of North Carolina. Mother Odessa Askew of Oxford, North Carolina. Yes, Sister Connie Wayne. I want to continue to remember the Berkeley family of Cape Wayne, Assembly of Yahweh. I want to continue to remember the Green family and the Pittman family. Yes, also, I pray as a minister about it today. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Remembering the passing of his uncle, brother Jose Butler. Pray Yahweh today that he will strengthen all the believers today. Yes, Give in to their supplications and their petitions. Only Yahweh can give us that peace and pass of all understanding. Yes, yeah. Father Yahweh, we thank you again. This another day. Y'all, we've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough for what you've done and for what you want to do. Thank you today, Father, for our last night's sleep, early rise this morning, the best share and warm in our veins. The articulation of speech that you have granted one more time to call upon your wonderful and adorable name. Thank you for sending your son Yeshua Hamashiach to the world to die that we might have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Today we come, we come boldly to the throne to obtain help in the time of need. Look down right now, Yahweh, upon your children. Look down upon each soul, each name, Father, that we have brought to the throne today. Get into to their supplication and their petitions right now, Hallelujah. Father, you know the situation, you know the circumstances. Y'all even those hearts right now, y'all be better sad. Bring comfort and peace, and only you can bring. Strengthen our hearts right now in the hour of need. Yes, sir. And Father, strengthen those right now who are struggling, trying to find their way home. Hallelujah. Those who are in the heart of seeking and don't know you in the bottom of their sins. Move by your power and by your spirit right now. 
Yahweh, look at those hearts right there. Sin right there, Yahweh. Sin right there, Yahweh. And then your name is upon your children right there. Oh, Yahweh, stir up, stir up, stir up right there. Yahweh, a dying world. That can know Yahweh that Yeshua will soon to come. Yahweh, it is your desire that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yahweh, today, let your word go forth, and let something be said today, Father, that will strengthen and encourage the hearts of your children. Give me a, give me a, give me a right now, Yahweh. Give me to our supplications, our petitions. Those aching mu muscles and those bodies wrapped in pain right now. Father, give me a right now. You know the situation, you know the circumstances right now. We know you to be. Oh, Yahweh, the land of all all flesh. Nothing, nothing, nothing is too hard for me, Yahweh. Yahweh, strengthen right now. Heal, heal. Oh, Yahweh, the attribute of your, of your, your countenance and your power. You are Yahweh, Roi. You are Yahweh, Missy. You are Yahweh, Shalom. You are Yahweh, Shalom, Father. You are our peace. You are our strength. Yahweh, today, Yahweh, be right there. Yahweh, Rafa, Rafa, Fika. Yahweh, the one that heals. Heal right now. Oh, Yahweh, all manner of disease. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. Thank you, Yahweh, for imparting that knowledge, opening the eyes of our understanding, that they may be enlightened according to the great word of your truth. Your truth, your truth, Father, that you continue to unfold and to share to your children. Continue to open our eyes. Continue to open our understanding, Yahweh, that we may walk. To your precepts and your ways, hallelujah. It is your word, Yahweh, that gives us life. It is your word, Yahweh, that gives us assurance. It is your word that gives us strength. It is your word that gives us joy. Thank you, oh Yahweh, for being who you are. Today we adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. We come today to give you praise and to give you honor. Thank you for this day. For this is the day you made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father, for those who are on our Zoom service today. Look down upon those souls today. Touch their homes, their families, their loved ones. Yeah. Strengthen them right now. Save Yahweh. Yeah. And the King of us will come. Yahweh, those right now, Father, we're in the presence of the call today. Thank you for your children. Thank you for your vessels today, Yahweh, who press their way out today, Yahweh, to be a part of this worship and experience. Thank you, Yahweh, Thank you. for what you've done and for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for being Yahweh. Shalom. Hallelujah. There's a peace we're called to know. Though our hearts and flesh may fail. There's an angel for our soul. Oh. 
Oh, 
Praying for the temperature to cool through each second for everything. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. And to start off today, we're going to have a solo from one of our number one male vocalists in the assembly here, the Honorable Elder Daniel Belcher, who is always ready. I know he has his anti shed case filled up with a new word today. Hallelujah. Praise God for Elder Belcher. Thank y'all for the opportunity to sing again in the assembly. It only takes a spark. To get a fire going And soon all those around Will warm up in its flowing That's how it is with yours, love Once you've experienced it You spread his love to everyone you want Hey, hey, 
Oh, 
We may shed tears right now. And after a while. We can make no further joy. They come to where he's going to wipe all tears away. Yahweh today for those beautiful selections. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Praising Yahweh for all of you today who are here. Thanking him for what he's done and for what he's going to do. Somebody said if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough. So happy today, beloved, to have you here and to have those of you in attendance. I'm always appreciative and thankful of the opportunity to come into the Cajon oh, yeah. once again. Oh, yeah. Praise Yahweh for our Zoom service today and Ooh. for those of you in attendance. Yeah. Praise Yahweh for the service thus far that you would pray for Pastor E. That Yahweh will strengthen and certainly allow me to get this out today that it's on my heart. I'm always appreciative of how Yahweh moves and how he shares his word. And as I was sharing with my companion this morning, some of the things that was moving within my spirit it was quite evident that Yahweh has certainly a lot of things that he wants us to be cognizant of and to certainly be conscious of. I am not your average minister when it comes to sermons and thoughts because I was chosen by Yahweh for a specific time and for a specific message. Oh, yeah. I cannot ignore the call on my life and the urgency of That's where right. he wants me to be in my proclamation and delivery of, of his word. I stand on the shoulders of some of the greatest scriptural pioneers and have a walk the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful to be a modern day minister who still loves and adore the name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Sure, I'm In a world with so many different narratives that have expanded and certainly its totality in the last several years, it has become paramount to me to be that voice and to be that horn in my own little way, my own little space on the earth, to proclaim, to cry loud, to spare not, and to lift my voice as a trumpet to show thy people in the house of Yekar, Yisrael, their sins that Yahweh is moving by his power and by his spirit. And as much as my heart loves my brother and my sisters, it grieves me dearly to go on my phone, on my computer, and to see knowledgeable men who outrightly just refuse to acknowledge and to proclaim the name of 
Yahweh. Hallelujah. They will give you bits and pieces mm -hmm. of scriptures and of stories, but it is quite evident that it is a part of the fabric of the earth, so heavily woven thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years ago by the orchestrator, the conductor, the deceiver, the deceptor, Satan himself. Mm -hmm. Who as it was declared in the book of Revelation, how the dragon was speared out from the earth, down from heaven to the earth, and how his main goal was to deceive the entire world. And man, he's done an awesome job in deceiving the world. They use that word scattered two or three times in that passage in the 12th chapter of Revelations, I believe, where his angels helped him in the deception of breaking down and destroying Yahweh's praises and his honor by destroying and taking Yahweh's name out of the mouths of his children and his people. Hallelujah. Yahweh raised up vessels throughout the ages, all Many bearing his name, those vessels who are great prophets of old, who now sleep and rest in the grave, but yet their words are still vibrant and loud and strong today, yet they are resting and waiting for the arrival and the appearing of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I am amazed at how we can be so blindly led by the blind. And when the scripture says, if the blind lead the blind, both are going to fall into the ditch. I have always been mindful. I've always been alerted by whatever rests in my spirit. And when something troubles you, you know you can hold it but for so long. And you got to share the word. I was all over scripture earlier this morning in the old and in the new and I said Yahweh why I've asked this question for years why did it have to be this way why couldn't it have been a world where we all called you by your name and went on and worship you in spirit and in truth but he reminded me to let me know that there was an angel One who desired to be greater than him. One who had aspirations to rise above him. One who wanted to have all authority and all power. And we're not talking about an ugly, undesirable being, celestial being that Yahweh created. We're talking about a beautiful, handsome that's right. Angel. Mm -hmm. Satan was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous in the fact that his beauty was just stunning to look at. Mm -hmm. And turned him from beauty to the illustrative term dragon. Yes, An ugly, grotesque, Come on. Come on undesirable beast that we equate with with our humanistic thinking and one who has totally turned this world upside down. Yes, indeed. It is 2023. <clears throat> and the story is still going on. Mm -hmm. The lie is still the same. Yeah, hallelujah. And the lie is growing by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. The momentum has been turned up. And ministers who you would have thought would have gathered some backbone, who would have gathered some strength and some courage to proclaim Yahweh's word in truth are falling by the wayside. They stand boldly in front of congregations across the land, proclaiming 
Lord God Jesus Christ. Sometimes they'll throw out Jehovah. Sometimes they'll throw out Yahweh. Sometimes they'll throw out Elohim. And they throw these terms out to let folk know I am aware of the truth, but I've chosen to follow the crowd. I've chosen to stay with the familiarity of people. And so oftentimes, we are blind. We are blind by our ignorance, our arrogance, and so much more. That some years ago, I preached a sermon in Richmond, Virginia, in my early ministries. It's time to take the shades off. You've been blind long enough. When I think about blindness, not having sight, and what sight does, and what Yahweh gives us when he opened the eyes of our understanding. I was led this morning to a beautiful story, one that's familiar among the Hebraic people, one who was written by a rabbi some years ago that I want to share with you today. And the moral of this story gives me credence to go further where I want to go today in my message. I can talk on any subject, beloved. I can talk on sin. I can talk on the blood. I can talk on faith. I can talk on motivation. I can talk on encouragement. But there is one sermon in me that I cannot ever depart from. And sometimes it comes in different forms and different fashions. Hallelujah. And when I'm moved, when I breathe, when I go on and I see ministers that I have respect for, because of their degree of knowledge and study over the years, to take a back seat mm -hmm. and literally slap Yahweh in his face. Mm -hmm. Total disregard Hallelujah. for who he is, what he is, and refusal to acknowledge his name. Yes, I know that we have to live a life free from sin. I know that we have to walk circumspectly. I know that we have to walk in the way that Yahshua laid out for us. He declared in the 14th chapter of Yah Canon in the 6th verse that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He said no man was going to come to the Father but by him. And with all that knowing and with all that saying, I'm still amazed with all that the world has seen, with all that Yahshua did. We're still in this whirlwind of deception. Hallelujah. And nothing is going to change the damage that Satan has done. You know, there was a story about a wife who got her eyes literally from a donor who was more close to her than she knew. I want you to listen to this story. Once upon a time, there lived a girl who was born blind, which caused her great anguish. She would always inquire about an eye transplant with the hope that maybe someday she could be given the gift of vision. She was told that she was on a 20-year waiting list. One day, a young man met her. He appreciated her on a deeper level. He saw beyond her closed eyes and beyond her bitterness. Deep inside of her, he found a very gentle, refined, and deep soul hurting badly. Hallelujah. He took a very deep liking to her. He finally proposed 
She said yes to the proposal. You can only imagine how she appreciated what he had done for her. One day he comes home and informs her she would not have to walk, wait 20 years for an eye transplant. In a few months, he says, she would be able to get a pair of eyes. She was overjoyed beyond words. Before she went into the surgery, he told her something. My dear wife, I don't want you to be shocked when you wake up. So I'm telling you this now. I'm a blind man too. I can't see. I'm a blind man too. I can't see. She began weeping. The transplant ended with success she opened her eyes and saw the world around her for the very first time. She saw the heavens. She saw sunrise, sunset. She saw children playing. She saw rain, snow, trees, streams, rivers, gardens, and animals. Her joy knew no bounds. In the beginning, she tended to him in tireless dedication and love. After all, he was the man who chose to marry her, the blind woman, and she knew how much he loved her. After all, this man allowed her to get the transplant. As time went on, she was feeling frustrated. Watch the devil again. She could finally travel and see the world, yet her husband's impediment would limit her and remove in every step she would make. It was just unfair to her, she felt. She wanted to go and live. Live it up, live it up. But her blind husband just needed too much attention. The woman decided to end the marriage. My dear, she said, I appreciate you and I love you. I feel our marriage is not allowing me to live a good life, a free life an exciting life. I just don't see the point in being married to you while I was in it. The day of the divorce, she found a letter under her pillow. And this is what it said. As you know, I've always loved you, dear, and cherished you. After your request for a divorce, I immediately complied with your request. Love can't be forced. I will miss you dearly, and I wish you the most beautiful, exciting, and fun life you wish for yourself. I would just ask you one favor. Those eyes of yours, please treat them well. Take good care of them. For not too long ago, 
those eyes were mine. I love you too much and could not bear to see you blind. So I gave you my eyes. That is why you did not have to wait 20 years. When I heard this story, I thought, what a powerful story. Yahweh created us, he designed our bodies, and he gave us a soul, sharing himself with each one of us. Yahweh asked us to live a life filled with justice and compassion, to be loving and kind, to be charitable and giving, and to be set aside and pure. He asked us to live a life dedicated to meaning and purpose, to follow his will. But we often say, Yahweh, I got no time for you. I got to see the world. I need to work to pay my bills. I need some time for recreation, for leisure, for fun. Yahweh, I'm not the religious type. Yahweh, I love to see the world. Yahweh, I need a divorce. <laughs> Great. And he replies, but who gave you those eyes? Heart, hand, feet, to be able to see and experience the world let alone experience me. Let's give Yahweh a praise. Hallelujah. Having said that, I want to revisit this morning a passage of scripture in the book of Genesis where all this mess started and how we have never rebounded and the pain and hurt that it has caused. I have Thank you, Yahweh, for what he's done in my life, the word that he has shared with me. And I want to share with you in the 12th, well, let me do this first. Yahweh is truly worthy. Hallelujah. To be praised. There have been a lot of stories told about the Tower of Babel. And I think sometime we have a tendency to forget. Where Yahweh wants us to be in the eleventh chapter. We're going to start reading at verse one. And we're going to look at how the conductor, the orchestrator, as he got in the heart of this woman in this story who was waiting for eyes for 20 years. Satan shows us how he manipulates and gives man the false impression that he can be great, even as great as Yahweh. He sold the same lie to Eve. 
sharing with her that I know what Yahweh told you about that tree of knowledge, but listen, listen, listen. And when we hear the word listen, we should only thank Yahweh when we say listen. Because all other thoughts certainly don't have any merit when it comes to not being in accord with his word. Listen. The book of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 11 and verse 1. And the whole earth was on one language and on one speech. Can you imagine that? There was one time on the earth, everybody spoke the same language. Everybody spoke the same language. It was no confusion, no trying to figure out. Everybody spoke the same thing. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto where? Heaven. And let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now the purpose here about being scattered, mm -hmm. these are the descendants of Noah. And remember the earth had been flooded. The entire earth had been flooded. So their purpose was to build this tower so if there was another flood, they would not be scattered throughout the earth. But look how Satan paints this picture and puts all these false hopes in your mind. Verse 5, And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. Yahweh personally came down. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one and they have all one language. Now watch this. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. In other words, if as one people with one language for all, this is how they have begun to act, then nothing that they may propose to do will end out of their reach. In other words, look, if they are able to accomplish all this when they have just begun to exploit their linguistics and political unity, just think of what they will do later. Nothing will be unattainable for them. Go to let us, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered, here we go again, that word scattered, them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city and therefore Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because Yahweh did there confound the languages, the languages of all the earth. And from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations, and it goes on to talk about the generations, but I wanted to give you that background because we forget sometimes there are 7,117 living languages on the earth today. There are 7,117 
living languages on the earth today. What did Pastor E just say? There are how many? No, I didn't say 1,000. 7,117 living languages on the earth. And watch this, beloved. All of them are different. All of them are different. And look what Yahweh did. He confounded the languages of the earth. How many of you sometimes get frustrated when you come in the company of a brother and sister from another, another country and you want so much to communicate with them but you can't because there's a language barrier? Oh, yeah. Ever been that way? Ever felt that? Oh, yeah. And yet, there is one word that we all have in common that nobody can change. And here's where I get my encouragement. And here's where I get my peace and my joy. Brother Maurice, I sing you out this morning because this is either your third or fourth time this morning here at the assembly. And your presence means so much. I share that to say with you and, and with the congregation. Yahweh has a plan for your life, my brother. I'm not sure what it is, but he has a plan for your life. And it's by no accident that you stumble across this assembly, this little assembly here in Grandy Street. And I praise Yahweh for you this morning. And all that Pastor E says and vocalized from this pulpit, I challenge anybody, I don't care who you are, from theological backgrounds, to scholarly study, to refute the name of Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach. And I say that to say this to you as I encourage you, my brother, in today's message. And I'm going to tie all this together in some capacity. And I won't reference my scriptures anymore today. Because all that I have to say is in me. And comes out of me. When I look at scripture and I think about the diabolical plan of the enemy to totally desecrate, to completely take out of the scriptures and totally disregard and to fabricate this lie and lies on top of lies, to completely take all honor and all Shekinah from Yahweh. Satan knows what his end is going to be. He realizes his time is short and time is drawing near. And we as believers have to understand what time it is. We can hear scriptures on sin. We can hear scriptures on love. We can hear scriptures on the blood. But I need to reemphasize something to you that we should never, ever forget. Anytime you see in your reading and in your passages where someone fear the name of Yahweh, Hallelujah. no one spoke about it so eloquently and so bold as David. David, you know him as David, the shepherd boy, David the hunter, David the warrior, and David ultimately the king of Israel. When you think about this David, and how he talk about the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools are led by and listen to the voice of Hasatan, Satan. And when you think about this passage, Nimrod in all of his splendor, thought it was above him to look up to the heavens and not know what was up there, to establish a name for himself that will be remembered by generations upon generations upon generations to come. And he didn't, he didn't quite get 
his fame. But the remnants of his fame is quite evident because Yahweh came down from heaven Hallelujah. and confounded the languages of the earth. And today, I marvel how people walk around and never really ask the question. Think about it for a second. Well, we got so many people on the earth that all speak differently, we can't understand. You ever ask that question? <laughs> Why all these folk on the earth, we can't figure out what they're saying? We have to have some kind of interpretation. We have to go to school and learn the language because these are different cultures. And even in the Amazon, they are still discovering small bodies of people here on earth in 2023 with new languages they ain't never heard before. So when I gave you 7,117, we are still adding to it. And yet, there's one word that's synonymous that the entire world cannot get away from. How could Yahweh take a Hebrew word like hallelujah and nobody can change that word. You can spell it with your alphabets, which is a transliteration. Not a translation, but a transliteration. And let me be real clear about a transliteration. When you say God and Lord, you are not translating Yahweh's name. When you say God and Lord, we talk about the same one. No, we're not talking about the same one. God and Lord are recent names that are fabricated by man. Fabricated means to be what? Made. Not a part of this earth. The Moses that you read about in scripture and I'll use the Gentile names for familiarity for right now, but I'm going to come back and correct them. The Jeremiah's and the Nehemiah's and the Obadiah's and the Zacharias, all of those, the Elijah's of the King James, never called Yahweh God. Never called him Lord. Why are you so passionate and so adamant about this, Pastor E? Because it's the word that's not in my mouth but in my heart. And I have to say what's in my heart. Moshe never called him God. Never called him Lord. You say, well, my Bible says, Lord, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And yes, your Bible does say that. But that is a translation from the Hebrew scriptures. And sadly as it, as it is, not only did they change, the Yahweh change the languages, Satan changed the names. As it was stated, the story that you're about to read are true. But watch this. All those names have been changed to confuse the innocent. So Satan says, okay, Yahweh, you come down here and you confuse all these people and you confused. We had one language and I was doing pretty good. I had my I had my act on the road. And you came down here and you confused and confounded all these languages. I'm gonna confuse them with your name. I'm gonna confuse them with your son's name. And I'm gonna lay out a road map that's gonna be difficult and complicated to follow. So much so that it's going to be so tiresome to people, they don't want to even explore the truth. They want to just accept the truth and not the absolute truth. That's right. See, when you accept the truth, that's the easy way out. <clears throat> History is exactly what the word means. What you're getting is his story. His recollection of how things went. Mm -hmm. And see, the truth is going to spring forth from the earth as the word of Yahweh says and lets us know this. Babel was the start and in the end it's going to be your faith that's going to get you out of here. Mm -hmm. 
your faith and your belief in Yeshua HaMashiach. The indwelling spirit, and this is why Yahweh had to give us the Ruach HaKadosh. When we think about the life in which we're living, the struggle, this morning, all over the earth, sermons are being preached today. And there are assemblies and there are vessels throughout the earth today who are proclaiming the name of Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach. But they are outnumbered. They are outnumbered by the massive numbers of shepherds and pastors who are proclaiming the false lies that Satan has promulgated and put out there in the world. A life best lived for me Why funerals are on my mind, and let me say this. We go to a lot of funerals. We hear a lot of messages. I can't stand before a congregation. No much as how much I love the family, how much I close this to the family. I gotta say what the word say. I can't fabricate it. I can't add to it and I can't take away from it. When you stand before a congregation and even though the family is grieving and hurting and you tell them that their loved one is looking down at a man smiling, where do you find that in scripture? Where do you find where they're walking the streets of God? Where do you find that they're singing in the celestial choir? <laughs> and if uncle so-and-so was a trumpet player, now he's in heaven playing trumpet for Yahweh. And I say that to say this. We have to proclaim the word of Yahweh in truth. That's right. Shaul made it clear, and I'm saying... How did so many people make it to heaven before Paul got there? <laughs> Shaul declared the time of my departure is at hand. He told young Timothy, I'm getting ready to go, man. They're getting ready to take me out. But here's what I want you to understand as a young pastor. You be strong. You stand strong. You study to show yourself approved, a worker of Yahweh, who need not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't, don't, don't get to that point where you embellish in the word and what you say it ain't right. I don't want to be one of those ministers who is ashamed. I've lost a lot of friends over the years because of the name of Yahweh, Yeshua, and the sheep. Lost a lot of friends. But I haven't found anybody yet. And I say this to encourage my brothers, my sisters. I've been in this way 40 some years, Sister, sister Kim. And I have yet to have a clergy, brother, sister, anyone to come back and refute anything that I've said about the name of Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach. My phone number ain't changed in all these years. And I'm still waiting for, for replies. And I often share this with people, Brother Maurice. I've had clergy down to the years. But Brother Elmo, if someone told my father, there was a Baptist minister, a very prominent Baptist minister in this area who told my father they used to get in conversations about the name Yahweh. And finally, he did some studying. And he came speeding down the street in Park Place many years ago stop in the middle of the street and my dad was outside and he said, Bishop Whitbury, I gotta speak to you. I remember that. I gotta speak to you. And he said, what's wrong, brother? He was a reverend. I won't call his name, but he since passed on. But he said, you're right. You're right. You're right about that Yahweh. That name Yahweh. You're right about it. Yeah, sure. Yes, you're right. He said, but you're gonna catch the devil presented. And I thought about that. 
we may catch the devil presenting what he orchestrated and put out. But as John 8.32 says, look what it says, and you shall be exposed. Your eyes shall be open to the truth. And guess what's going to make you free? The truth. How can you be in a situation when you know the truth and yet you close your eyes to be blind? The husband in the story gave his eyes to his wife that she could see. And yet when her eyes were open, she was still blind. Because she couldn't see the love of her husband. As people today cannot see the love of Yahweh, that he chose to give his only begotten son, mm -hmm. which was begotten of him from where we get the term El Shaddai or Shaddai, you meaning Yahweh the breasted one, the feminine nature of Yahweh as a mother who, who gives a babe into the world, Yahweh gave us his son. And that son came to save us from our sins. You know, what I like so much about the word of Yahweh, the word of Yahweh is always on time. And it will always do what it says it's going to do. You would think that John 3.16 was something that Yahshua just was throwing out there. But I like how the word repetitively repeats itself and emphasizes the statement. As John 3.16 tells us, For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. Now John's, John 3.17, very few people will quote that. And very few people know it. But it says, Yahweh didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through his son, the world might be saved. You know what? John 12 and 47 also says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save it. Oh, yes. Yeah. But to save the world. Yes. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words have one that judgeth him. Mm -hmm. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Oh, yes. The same one who came to save the world is the same one who will come to judge the world. Hallelujah. Yahshua said, I came as a savior of saving the world. The next time I come, I come as a judge Hallelujah. to judge the world. Hallelujah. I've given you a roadmap to follow. I've told you that I am the way. Choose the way. I told you I am the truth. Choose the truth. And if you want to gain eternal life, I am the life that you see, not the life of this world. And yet, in the 12th chapter of your canon, he says, in that 49th verse, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. I speak it now, he says. Therefore, whatever I say, I only say it only. What the Father has taught me to say. Oh, yes. Yahshua spoke. His disciples followed. 
his apostles led. It was all laid down. And now, I told you I was in old and new. Last week I was in Uremiah chapter 23, and I can't stay out of it. I can't stay out of it. I can't stay out of it, but because you know why? Yahweh raised this prophet, Uremiah. You know it as Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23, we know it as Uremiah. Jeremiah is a Latin form of the name Uremiah. And let me tell you something. Jeremiah is not even a transliteration of the name Uremiah. What is a transliteration, Pastor E? And we need to get this straight. We live in a world today where we recognize names of people. I've never seen anybody call Vladimir Putin out of his name. That's right. Vladimir Putin is Russian. We spell it with English alphabets, but we pronounce it Vladimir Putin. Yeah. yeah. And that's not English language, that's the Russian language. Right. How can Vladimir Putin get more respect than Yahweh and Yeshua? Conspiracy. Because the world is hung up on the words translation and transliteration. Let me be real clear. You cannot translate a proper name. You can only transliterate it. What does that mean, Brother Maurice? Here's what it means. Maurice is your name. Wherever you go in the world. And I gotta respect that. I can't change it. Even if I don't like it, I still can't change it. That's your name. And wherever you go in the world, you are recognized by Maurice. As Yahweh is recognized by Yahweh. But we choose, we choose to jump on the bandwagon and buy the lie that Satan did because the scripture says in the 12th chapter of Revelation that he deceived who? The whole world. That's right. Satan deceived the whole world. And when you think about his deception, the enemy did a knockdown, drag out job when it came to deceiving the entire world. And here, and here's what he did. Thinking about, thinking about Satan. The great dragon. In the 12th chapter of Revelations, verse 9 through 15, the great dragon was hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil of Satan, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. How? How does he lead the whole world astray? By falsifying and taking everybody off the path of the way, giving honor to idols, and paganistic worship. <laughs> he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our Most High and the authority of his Mashiach. Hallelujah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, whose accusers them from our most high day and night. He, he works tirelessly day and night. Look at verse 11 of 12th chapter Revelation. They triumph over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe, but woe to the earth and the sea. 
because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury. Angry. One total agenda to destroy Yahweh's creation. He is filled with fury. There is no love in Satan. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Those who go after fame and fortune, look at the end. Look at the end. We see the funerals. We see, we hear so and so has passed. This person has passed. And notice when they pass. There are no hearse filled with any of their materialistic wealth. All that money all those materialistic things are left here on earth. Not knowing, as we just read a few minutes ago in the 12th chapter of the Yachanan, one day we all are going to appear. There are two judgments. Judgment of the white throne and the judgments of the believers. Those who followed Yahshua and those who chose the other path to follow the world. Mm -hmm. Two judgments. Mm -hmm. Which judgment are you going to be at? And let me tell you something. As I said before, that's an appointment we're all going to keep. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be late for it. Hallelujah. The record is going to be played. Mm -hmm. And there won't be no time for no explanations. Well, uh, well, uh, well uh, I meant, this is what I meant, or a uh, 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 No. The record is going to be played. Amen. The video is going to be seen. That's right. And what I love so much about it, Yahweh is so massive in thinking. You know, we can't even internalize how much time this would take. How do you, how do you judge all these trillions of people? And everybody is going to have their own individual day in court. Hallelujah. One day with Yahweh is like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So how massive and how broad is Yahweh? What we had was a segment of Yahweh when Yahshua was on the earth. Mm. Yahshua is so vast, even in our intellect, how is it possible that every eye is going to see him? <laughs> Something to wrap your head around. And everybody's going to have their day in court standing before the king. This time, he ain't coming back as Yahshua the Savior. He's coming back as Yahshua the Judge. And here's a part that I want to drive home real clear. We, we quote it. We keep saying it. Oh, I know John 3, 16, Pastor. I know, yes, yes. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believed believe him, but it would not perish, but have everlasting life. And they just smile like you've said a whole lot. Then you come back and say, well, bro, what about verse 17, 18, 19, and 20? That conversation's still going on. It didn't stop. Why most people stop at John 3, 16? Look what the 17th verse says. Yahweh didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through his son the world might be saved. Then it goes up to the 18th verse and says, he that believeth is not what? They use that word condemn. Let me change it for you. The same word condemn is the same word judged. He that believeth is not judged. But he that believeth not, guess what? He's judged already. And I ask the question, why? They put that conjunction in there because. See, the conversation's still going on. He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. How important is it to be, how important is it to believe in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh? For this is the condemnation. This is the judgment. What is the judgment, Pastor E? That light have come into the world. Who was the light? Yeshua. Not Jesus. Not Jesus. Not Jesus. You can call him Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Lord, Jesus whatever you want to call him. Jesus is not his name. Hallelujah. Lord is not his name. Mm -hmm. 
And Christ is not his name. Well, look. Here's where it gets so messy. Our scriptures got into the hands of the Greeks. Just like we were talking this week, and, and, and Sister Molly and I, we, we, we always talk about that. Get a chance to love and talk about the scriptures. They got a movie out there called Lazarus. Some of you may even know this. Yahshua did not say, Lazarus, come forth. What'd you say, Pastor? Come on. So, Belcher looking at me like that, you done lost your mind. I done. I've been taught that many times in scripture. That's right up here. That's the problem. I've been taught it. Yahshua never said, Lazarus, come forth. Mm -hmm. Notice my voice, Ella Belch. And I said, I said with power and authority. Did you know, Ella Belch, that Lazarus is a Greek name? <laughs> And Lazarus comes from the Hebrew name Eleazar. Eleazar! Come forth. Which means Yahweh will help. Mm. How does that change the scope of things? Because it points and tells us the Greeks came in there, slipped in a whole lot of names. Whole lot of names and a whole lot of titles that were not a part of the Aramaic scripture. Yahshua didn't speak no Greek. He spoke Aramaic. Lazarus is a Greek name. It derived from the Hebrew name. And all you got to do, take your smartphone and look up, the, look up like some of you are doing right now. Look, look up Lazarus. And somebody says, you know, Pastor, you know what he's talking about. Get up here and make a fool of myself. What you think? Sure, I know what I'm talking about. Right. Eliezer, come forth. Well, I say that to say this. Paul, who we call Paul, that's another Gentile name. Shaul. And his name actually talks about a little man. Paul was no big guy. If you think about a little short guy like Ella maybe. Paul might have been around his side. <laughs> but he spoke powerfully. And his letters, his letters were even more powerful when he came in person. They said, man, you can't, this, you got to be kidding me. This, this you? This you that I'm reading here? This you? <laughs> little guy like you? This can't be right, man. Something wrong with this picture. No, that's right. The same one that was knocked down on the road to Damascus. The same one who was told how much he had to suffer for the name of Yahshua. And Yahshua said, I'm going to show you, Paul, Shahu, how you must suffer for my name, how you must bear my name. He didn't realize that Yahshua literally mean bear. Because the Stripes and the whips and the marks that he got on his body, the knocks upside his head, the stoning and all. In the sea at night, naked, hungry. All of that was for the name of Yahshua. The same Shaul who persecuted his brothers and sisters for following something called the way. Not the Methodist, not the Pentecostal, not the Baptist, not the Jehovah Witness, not the Catholic, not the Presbyterian, not the Seventh-day Adventist, but the way. You don't find any of them in scripture. This is why he called himself the way. And what they followed, what the believers of old followed was the way. It wasn't the assemblies of Yahweh. It wasn't the refuge church of our Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't the true true church of God. It wasn't the seventh day of Venice. It wasn't Baptist. It wasn't Zion. It wasn't Shiloh. All these names we give our churches. It wasn't any of that. It was simply the way. So much so that Yahweh established it in the old when he told his children go and ask for the old path. Where is? Ask for the 
good way. And when you see it, walk therein. Hallelujah. What did the hard-headed hard -headed Israelites do? They told Yahweh, we will not walk therein. Yeah, that's right. And as a result, we're paying the price today. Oh, yeah. So to sum up what Pastor has said today, and I'm, I'm concluding, I've got off my chest today that I can speak a lot of sermons, but this one right here, from Nimrod to Babel to Babylon to those great three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. I can't close without mentioning them, Sister Kim. Not three Babylonian boys, but three who? Hebrew boys. And most folk are running to holler what, Ella Belch? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You said Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro? <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. Always put the substitute in. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All Babylonian names. That's right. Not their original what? Hebrew names. That's right. And their original Hebrew names were what? Hananiah, Ezariah, and Meshach. Right. May Yahweh have favor upon you, beloved. I hope and pray that you receive something from the word today, even if you're just encouraged to stay strong, stay bold, proclaim, and don't be a wimpy person when it comes to saying Yahweh's name in conversation. Be strong. Yahweh is looking for us to be strong. Don't take a back seat to nobody. I don't care if you're around family, loved ones, whomever. If they choose to say, Lord God, Jesus in Christ, then that's what they choose to say. Yeah. But you being a follower of Yahweh, what you going to call it? Hallelujah. He, he says, now, if you're ashamed to own me before men, I'm going to be ashamed to own you before who? Y'all should have made it clear. He said, if you get cold feet, and I said this before, in the assembly here on Grammy Street 2808, I've seen folk come and go, and I've seen them be strong and cry loud in here. Yahweh, Yahweh, you sure? I'm a shield, yeah. yeah. Throwing their arms up, handkerchiefs and everything else. <laughs> and then Monday, the same person, the loudest one in the assembly, somebody said, well, praise God. They said, yes, praise him. Praise him. Who is him? Then somebody will say to you, to God be the glory. What are you supposed to say back? Yahweh. Hallelujah. Because that's your opportunity to share the truth. In no way, in no way get around it. You're either going to stand up for the truth or you're going to roll with the lie. And I would say this. Don't be halfway with it. Don't have one foot in Yahweh assembly and one foot outside in the Jesus Christ church. Don't speak Yahweh in here and speak Jesus Christ outside this, these, these four walls. Because Yahweh hears you. Yes. Yahshua hears you. Yes. That word have I hid where? In my heart. No, in my mind, in my mouth. If Yahweh is just in your mouth, it's going to come up. Eventually it's going to come up. Because folk will want to understand one thing. Don't get it twisted. And believe us, one day maybe I may preach this sermon. Don't get it twisted when you see me. <laughs> Don't get it twisted when you see me. I'm a child of the king. And I call him Yeshua. Hallelujah. I'm a sheep. Let's give Yahweh praise. Hallelujah. Yahweh's good. I trust and hope that you have received something from the word today. I know I have. And I praise Yahweh for you, for your attendance, for your time, and for your patience. I'm going to ask at this time if we can have uh, Ella Belcher, you can come and give us our closing remarks and benediction. Let's receive it with a hearty hallelujah. hallelujah. With a hearty hallelujah. 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 Thank y'all for Pastor Ben for the message we had today. 
and for the word today. And I'm also asking that anybody within the sound of my voice that you take this message to heart mm -hmm. and consider Yahweh, consider oh, yeah. Yahshua, Hallelujah. and consider your soul. That's right. And so the invitation is to read your scriptures daily, to meditate upon Yahweh's word, to call your friends and family and let everybody know about the name of Yahweh, Yahshua the Messiah. And with that being said, we're going to get ready to close out from our service today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Yahweh, for what you've done today, Father, for that word that went forth today, Yahweh. As Yahweh lead, God, direct our steps, Yahweh. Move in our households, Yahweh. Move in our families, Yahweh, our loved ones, Father. Yahweh, even move throughout the world today, Yahweh. Many people are calling out to you today, Yahweh, knowing you're able, Yahweh. There's many different situations throughout the world, Yahweh, but we know you're a way maker, Father. I'm just asking Yahweh to move by your power and by your strength in the household, Yahweh. Yahweh, even those in the state of bereavement today, Yahweh, ask you to bring comfort in those situations, Yahweh. Strengthen our heart, Yahweh. Strengthen our soul and our body, Yahweh. As we call on your day, Yahweh, and recognize the great name of Yahweh, Father, and who you are in our lives, Father. Yahweh, let our steps be upon our word, Yahweh. Let us think upon you daily, Yahweh. Let us meditate upon you daily, Yahweh. Yahweh, watch over our children, Yahweh. Yahweh, watch over our schoolhouses, Yahweh. Yahweh, watch over the hospitals today, Father. Even moving the prison houses today, Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh, move throughout the governments throughout the world today, Yahweh. We call on you today, Yahweh, because we know, Yahweh, that you got the last say so, Yahweh. That you're a way maker in all situations, Yahweh. Move by your power, by your strength. In the name of Yahshua, the Messiah, Father. I pray this prayer, Father. In Yahshua's name, Amen. Amen. Thank you.